Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer and today I'm going to make a video about true, should I say true Israel, who is really the descendants, the true descendants of Abraham. I came across this study in Galatians and wow, I don't really remember that section. I know quite a lot about Galatians and how Paul was discussing the fact that we are not under the law anymore and that even um, he was, you know, communicating with the first apostles about how much of the law do the um, Gentiles have to fulfill. And so, that is addressed in um, Acts, um, where, the, where the apostles actually told the Gentiles uh, what kinds of things they have to fulfill. They have to keep away from fornication, from blood um, sacrifice to idols, or meat sacrifice to idols. Stay away from blood. I mean, that's, I think, is very important too. So there's several things that the, the, the Gentiles are supposed to be uh, keeping themselves from, but they, ne they are never told to follow the law of Moses. Never. And so Paul picks this up in Galatians. Um, but in verse, uh, in chapter 4, he addresses who the real descendants of Abraham um, are. Now, Jesus had a conversation conversation with the Pharisees when he was alive, who are the true, you know, descendants of Abraham, Abraham, because the Pharisees said, well, we are Abraham's children, right? And Jesus said, no, you are really the children of um, Satan. Satan is your father. So then Paul picks that up again, okay, um, and tells us who are the real descendants, to the real, uh, yeah, if you want, children of Abraham. And we start in verse 21. He writes, tell me, you who want to be under the law. Now, we know that a lot of people today think it is cool to be under the law, or they think, I shouldn't use the word cool, but they think that they please God better if they're under the law, or they think we have to be under the law because the law of Moses is not put away, okay? Now, the law of God, of course, is never put away, and Jesus wrapped up the law uh, with two commandments, love God and love your neighbor. And if we fulfill those two, um, the law is fulfilled. There's also another saying in by Paul that if you, and I believe it's even, I read it even here. Oh yeah, in chapter five, he then talks about if you walk in the spirit, you fulfill the law of Moses. Okay, there's no other way. If you walk in the spirit, and that's in chapter five, you walk you, you fulfill the law. But here is saying speci specifically to these people that, one can, that want to continue to follow the law of Moses. And I'm talking about the law of Moses as in Judaism. Okay. Uh, so he's saying, uh, do you not listen to the law? That's what he says at the end. Do you not listen to the law? And here's what the law says. For it is written that Abraham had two sons. Remember, the law is the five books of Moses. That's considered the law. And so that is in the law or in the five books of Moses, Torah. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the bondwoman and one by the free woman. Okay. But the son by the bondwoman was born according to the flesh. And the son by the freed woman through the promise. 
Okay, you all know that story, right? Isaac and Ishmael. Ishmael was born by the bond woman, which was the uh, handmaiden of Sarah. And because Sarah couldn't get any children, she told Abraham to have a child for her with her maiden. So she did. But yet, he says here, this is the child of the bond woman. And of course, Isaac is the child of promise. Because God promised it was a miracle. Okay. This is allegorically speaking for these women are two covenants so it's allegorically speaking for these women which are two covenants it's written really strange one proceeding from mount sinai bearing children who are in the uh, who are who are to be slaves okay she is hagar Okay. Children who are not from free women are slaves. Now this is Hagar. Now this now this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. Now what slavery is he talking about? Okay, he's talking about slavery to sin. They are under sin. They're not under grace, so they're under sin, which is slavery, which is also symbolic by the Israelite or the Hebrews going into slavery in Egypt. And Moses leading them out of Egypt in the slavery, okay? But this is more a spiritual allegory too, okay? It's an allegory. Everything seems to be an allegory, of course, in the Old Testament, or a lot of it is. But this one is. Hagar and Sarah are allegories. Two women, two covenants. But, and I'm reading in verse 26 now, but the Jerusalem above is free. She is our mother. Okay? Very important. Abraham was looking forward to the new Jerusalem always. He did not move into Jerusalem or Salem, the earthly Jerusalem. Because Salem, where Shem lived, was not very far from where um, Abraham settled. But Abraham did not believe in moving in with Shem and taking over Salem. Okay, he was looking forward to the new Jerusalem, which is, of course, a heavenly Jerusalem. So that's why this Jerusalem is from above and it is free. She is our mother. So Jerusalem is our mother. Okay, for it is written, rejoice barren woman who does not bear. And that was Sarah. Remember? She was very old when she had Isaac, and he was really a miracle birth. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor, for more are the children of the desolate than of the one who has a husband. And you, brethren, like Isaac, are children of promise. But as at that time, he who was born according to the flesh persuaded, uh, persecuted actually him who was born according to the spirit. So it is now also, hmm, is that true? Is it like that now too? Who is pers persecuting who? Well, during Paul's time, um, Paul himself persecuted who? The true Christians, right? So who persecuted the true Christians? The Jews. The Jews persecuted the true believers. And so it was then. Ishmael, there was a time when Ishmael persecuted actually Isaac. Okay. So 
it is today or during pulse time. The, 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 the Jews, the biological descendants of Abraham, who are really, what, slaves? Slaves to sin, okay? Are persecuting the true children of promise, which are the believers in Messiah. Hmm, isn't that interesting? So anyways, um, so here it is. It continues with verse 30. But what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. Wow. That is radical, right? But that, that's what happened, right? Because um, that's what, you know, God really told Abram, it's okay. It's okay to um, dismiss Hagar. Because there was a dispute, okay? There was a dispute between um, Ishmael and um, Isaac. I don't know. We don't know exactly what happened. You know why um, there was like a quarrel going on? I have no idea. I, I, I mean, we don't know that much, but there was a quarrel. And after that quarrel, um, you know, he was told to send Ishmael and his mother away. And so he says, cast out the bondwoman and her son. Um, I'm just looking where that would be, Genesis. I don't see it. But anyways, cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be an heir with the son of the free woman. Wow. Okay, we know this story, right? We know this story um, about Abraham and uh, about Isaac and Ishmael. But we're not so shocked, are we, about that one? But now Paul is relating this to whom? He is relating this to Israel. Israel, who are really allegorically like Ishmael, okay? Get that straight in your head. Okay, I'm not making this up. And the true believers, the Christians, the true believers in Messiah are the true heir, okay? How many times are we hearing, how many people are believing that Israel, the state of Israel, the Jews, they deserve the promised land because they are the true heir of um, or heirs of um, Abraham. How many how many times are we being told that story that they are the true people? They are the true Israel. Okay. And yet Paul is telling us clearly here. So my question is, these people who say that, are they truly familiar with the teaching of Paul? Which Paul really contains most of the doctrine um, of, uh, the, of Christian, Christian doctrine. Okay, that's what Paul's letters are. They are mainly... A Christ, the, the Christian doctrine. And, and so if you do not know Paul, okay, then my question is, what side are you on? Are you on the side of spiritual Ish, uh, Ishmael or what side are you really on? And I think that is something that I want to bring up very, very seriously today because I found this and I'm thinking, wow, how many times am I hearing lately people saying that, oh, you know, the Jews are the true descendants of Abraham and they have all the right. How many times am I hearing about we need to support Israel, the state of Israel, okay? Or how many times do we hear about we need to support 
Jerusalem. We have to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But really, what kind of peace are we supposed to be praying for? The real worldly Jerusalem? Or are we really talking about the heavenly Jerusalem? Who is this heavenly Jerusalem? Of course, we can find that in um, Revelation. Matter of fact, in Revelation 21, when it comes down, because that new Jerusalem that is being prepared right now, who is this new Jerusalem? This new Jerusalem is also called the bride of Christ because new Jerusalem is the dwelling place of the bride of Christ. Jesus right now is building this new Jerusalem. Okay. He is preparing it. He's making all the rooms necessary for all the saints right now. So when he is finished with this new Jerusalem, this building, Okay, and you can look in in um, in Revelation twenty one, um, and I believe also twenty two. You can find this New Jerusalem come down. Okay, Ezekiel also describes it, uh, this New Jerusalem or the temple. Okay, so um, you can look in Ezekiel two and find it there. And I don't have right now where it is in Ezekiel. But this new Jerusalem is being built right now by Jesus. It's not something that is being built here on earth. It's not built somewhere in Jerusalem. It has nothing to do with the temple. And I want to just really clearly, clearly, clearly stress this. A new temple or a third temple has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with this new Jerusalem. This temple is actually in this new Jerusalem are we, okay? All believers, including um, Christ. We are, or including Jesus, the Lamb. That is, all of us are the temple right now. It's another name for new Jerusalem. It's the temple. So eventually this new Jerusalem and the temple are one. They're not two things anymore. Okay, we have in the old uh, Jerusalem, uh, in the worldly Jerusalem, we have Jerusalem where the people live and we have the temple. But that's not so. We know Paul taught clearly that we are the temple. Each person is a stone in this temple. Okay, and this temple is this new Jerusalem that Jesus is building right now. And that is what Abraham was looking forward to. And all believers in the Old Testament that believed in Messiah and they believed in Abraham, okay, and who really had Abraham as their true father, spiritual father, they all believed that uh, they believed in this new Jerusalem that, that will be built. They were longing and looking for it. Um, so, and it finishes up, in verse 31, so then, brethren, we are not children of a bondwoman, okay, but of the freed woman. So we are children of Sarah. We're not children of Hagar. We're children of Sarah. Now, of course, the Jews think they can boast because they have, of course, Abraham uh, biological, their descendants, biological descendants of Abraham. That's been a long time ago. What, 4,000 years? 4,000 years, the Jews mixed and mixed and mixed with other cultures. There is not one, um, I mean, if you look, I mean, how in the world can you prove that you are a Jew, really? Okay, it's, it's like impossible. Number one, Abraham had not only Isaac, but he also had, of course, Ishmael. And he had seven more sons after Isaac and after Sarah died. Okay, so they can all be traced back to Abraham. Think about that. So, biologically, how can anybody trace their lineage back to Abraham? It's almost impossible. 
Okay, and we know also about these Ashkenazi Jews that um, really are not Jews. They just converted to Judaism. And a lot of the Jews today actually can trace back their lineage to these Ashkenazi, Ashkenazi Jews. So, yeah, if anybody can tell me today they can trace their lineage back, especially the 10 tribes, they are lost. There's no way anybody can find them. And also the, the Jews, which are the descendants of the tribe of Judah. Um, and, you know, they say Benjamin belongs to that too. It's very hard to trace your lineage back to actually... Um, like a Semitic kind of race. Uh, it's almost impossible. But what's more important, we know that the Jews belong to a certain religion called Judaism, and that's why they're Jews too. Okay? So are the Christians. We believers in Messiah are spiritual children. Okay, we are belonging to Abraham, our father, because we believe in the Messiah. And that's what, of course, Abraham was. He was the father of faith. Okay, and when you know and you continue reading um, Paul, you read exactly that, that you are children of faith so keep reading galatians because it is very interesting there's other things that i really saw in there um that you know if you're not convinced that we don't live by the law anymore we live by the spirit and the prophets they uh, uh, prophesied that someday the law will be put on our heart. And that's exactly what happens when we follow Messiah, when we follow Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit will indwell us and that we now, because we follow the Spirit or we have the Spirit, that we actually fulfill the law. The law will be written on our heart, okay? There's no more, oh, we have to do this, like a checklist. Oh, we have to do this and we have to do that. Me, no, no, no. That's, that's not necessary. Also, at the end of this video, I also want to mention something very important. Now, we know that the law of Moses, most of the law of Moses, let's say, and I'm not 100% sure, but it's probably close to 75 to 80% of the law of Moses cannot even be fulfilled today. Why? Because they pertain to the sacrifices um, of the temple. So without the temple, about 75 to 80% of the law of Moses cannot be fulfilled. And God did that on purpose, people. He did it on purpose. He had the temple destroyed on purpose. Why? Because Jesus uh, was the fulfillment of all sacrifices. He put an end to all sacrifices because he was the ultimate, the ultimate sacrifice promised by Moses and the prophets and Abraham. This whole um, sacrificial system of Moses was only put in place um, temporarily. And if you study Paul, again, you will learn that. It's only a temporary, temporary sacrificial system that will go away when true Messiah comes. And since true Messiah is here, you should know it. Please read Daniel. Daniel will tell you clearly. Where is it? In Daniel... Um, in Daniel, Daniel 9, I believe, or is it Daniel 7? I keep forgetting. Uh, let me see if I can find Daniel really, really fast here. Um, uh, I cannot find it fast. 
No, Daniel. Okay, here we go. All right, it's in Daniel 9. The 70 weeks of Daniel is in Daniel 9. Okay, so chapter 9 of Daniel. Read chapter 9 and the 70 weeks of Daniel. And you will see exactly when Messiah came. No doubt in his mind. Okay, the Jews should know. I don't know why they missed him. <laughs> It was just so unfortunate, and it cost them everything. It almost cost them their whole, whole culture because they were almost destroyed. But I'm not going to talk about that today. But anyways, read Paul. Read Paul. Paul, and especially Galatians. It tells you so clearly. Galatians is the book, okay, to let you know that we are not under the law anymore and that we are truly Abraham's children by his wife, Sarah. Okay, we are the children of promise, not biological. There is no benefit, and Paul says that too, um, somewhere. And if you can look it up um, online, Put in, there is no, uh, what's the benefit of a, being a Jew? Okay, put in there, what's the benefit of being a Jew? And um, put in Paul, and it will most likely pop up, okay? Because Paul says there is no benefit. The only benefit the Jews had is that they had the oracle of God, and they messed that up. And so there's no more benefit for them. Because now the oracle of God went to the Gentiles. They actually lost that benefit. They had it. They had the prophets. Okay. They actually had the word of God, the promise. They were supposed to tell the world about Jesus, about the Messiah coming. And yeah, they missed him. They missed him. So the oracle of God went to the Gentiles. Okay, now we're living in the times of the Gentiles. And once that time is over of the Gentiles, Jesus will return. Okay, Jesus will return and everybody will see him. Okay, but don't wait that long. Don't wait that long. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. Accept him for what the uh, the prophets um what the prophets told about him, that he is the savior, that he is God in the flesh who would come and be the ultimate sacrifice. Believe that and then follow him, okay? Don't follow man-made religions. Like even if I talk, you know, Judaism is a man-made religion and probably most of Christianity is a man-made religion, okay? I'll encourage you to just read the Bible and really just follow Jesus. All the denominations are man-made. Um, that's just the bottom line, okay? They say they're Christians and they say they follow the Bible and sometimes they say the right things. But in reality, they teach a lot of false doctrine as well. So best thing is to just read the Bible and um, just follow Jesus and Read what Paul is writing, okay? Follow the things that Paul is writing, okay? So anyways, I'm coming to the end today. And read Galatians, the whole Galatians, okay? But if you want to just read Galatians 4.21 to the end of the chapter, that's okay too. But you will find Galatians has a lot more interesting things in it. So... Let the Holy Spirit guide you always. See, Jesus said he is going to send as a teacher and a counselor. And that's the Holy Spirit. And he is going to guide us in everything. Okay? So, don't trust um, any people. Uh, that includes me, of course, too. Read these things again and listen and let the Holy Spirit guide you.